this video about JUnit 5 deep dive. In this video, I'll show you how to create unit tests with new features of JUnit 5. I'll use example uh, test driven development approach and we'll create a factory program. To begin with, I'll create a new Java project. I'll call this factorial calculator. And we'll use Java SE 10. We'll keep remaining settings as it is. I'll do next. And I will create another folder, source folder, test folder. This will help me to organize my test and source code in different modules. I don't want Java module. I'll skip this and move further. Now let's start with test, a test case. So let's create a new JUnit test. I say new JUnit test case. Uh, let's name this. Uh, so let's let's create a package. I'll say com rooms dot example. I'll call this factorial test. I'll have the setup and teardown method. I will uh, say finish. I'll add the JUnit file library to the build path. And now I have got a new test case. Let me use one new feature of uh, JUnit file, which is called display class. Uh, sorry, display name. Let me call this test factorial calculation. I need to organize import here. So I see import display name, I add this. Now let me create a picture. Uh, let's have a class for factorial. Right? And then let's uh, create in the setup method new object for this class. So I use this picture equal to new factorial. Okay, so let me call this class as a factorial. Uh, now you see here we have an implementation and let's have say some test also. So I would say test factorial of zero. I will copy this. I'll create some more methods. I will say test factorial of one, test factorial of four, and let me also test the factorial of five. Okay. So these are some of my test cases. Uh, now I see this error messages. Okay, so let me create a new implementation for this. So right now to execute this JUnit test, as you see, okay, there's an error. So let's resolve this error first. Okay, what it says, it says there's no uh, interface called ifactorial so let me create an interface ifactorial i will use src folder because this is the source code this is my production code not the test code so i put choose this i make this as a public package okay and i just say finish so i have got this factorial interface uh, let me have one public method here which will return long and which i will call uh, calculate factorial and let me take one integer I will call this number. So this is my interface definition. I save this, come back here. I see one more error. Let me come here. I will see what this error is. So this error is about, okay, again, the class is not available. So let me create this class. So this is my factorial calculator. Uh, okay, I need to choose the folder. Again, I'll use the source folder because this is for my source code. I will name this factorial and uh, this has an interface. I factorial already have it. So I don't want any uh, main method, I will just go and create this. Now, uh, let me come to my implementation and uh, then I see, okay, there are some errors. Okay, so I need to rename the methods. Uh, so this is for factorial of one. This is factorial of four, factorial five. Okay, just copy one time extra. I remove this. Now all my code has passed any compile, so there's no compilation error. I will execute the test. So I go here, click and I say run as JV test. So I see all my tests are failing. Okay, now this description uh, is, uh, okay, test factorial of one. Let me add some uh, display names for this as well to make it look better. This is a really good feature of uh, Java, JUnit file. Now let's call this test factorial of zero. Uh, this is to give a better label for my test. I name it factorial of one, I name it factorial of four, and then I will name this last one as factorial of five. 
Okay, uh, these are actually no tests implemented. Let's start implementing the tests. So I would say assert equals, okay, uh, so this one is at static, okay. So this is assertions. In JUnit 5, we have assertions instead of assert. So I will say assert equals, and we use long in this case. So I choose the long part, okay. Okay, now uh, in the assertions, okay, I can do static import. So I see there is assertions already added. Now here, the factorial of zero, I'm expecting one because factorial of zero is one. Actually, it would be picture dot factorial, uh, calculate factorial. And then we pass the number, which is zero. So this is what, okay, and in case uh, uh, there is an error, I would say a factorial of zero can be uh, okay, so wrong calculation. Calculation of factorial zero. Okay. So let me run this test case again. Okay. okay. So you see the assertion paid and is not yet implemented. The picture dot factorial is not yet implemented. Now next step is to make this test pass. Okay, so test factorial of if this is a typo, it should be zero. Yes. So I will read on this and assertion fail. Fixture dot calculate factorial. Let me create the factorial calculate factorial. This is my method. It returns zero. I would say if number equal to zero. Then I will let's have one long variable which is called result and in case then we go to one and we can result. Now my factorial method is implemented and it should okay I initialize this. Okay, so now uh, my method is implemented. So I save this, let's calculate what the result is. As you see now, the test calculation of factorial is passing. If by default I make some other value and then rerun this, I see okay, factorial is again failing. Wrong calculation of factorial, and then this test message is coming. Uh, expected one, but was two. So let me fix this and then rerun this again to make it pass. So this is one example of test-driven development. So here I first developed the test case. So we have the test case for zero. And then we write the code to make the test pass. Now let's make this test. Okay, correcting some typos here. Uh, let's make this code uh, work for factorial of one. Okay, so factorial of one is also one. Now factorial of four is four into three into two into one. This one, the factorial of 4 is, so which will come to 24. Okay, this is my test case, and factorial of 5 similarly. I write for factorial of 5. We know uh, this is 5 into, okay, so let me put this. This comes to be 120. And now my, all the tests are implemented. Let me execute this. No surprises, since the implementation is very basic. Most of the test cases will fail. Okay, so luckily two test cases are passing test factorial of one, test factorial of zero. Now let me write implementation to make this test case pass. Okay, uh, so going back to the factorial implementation. So here, if number is zero or number is equal to one, then the result is one. So this is, you can just put some, uh, so factorial of zero and one is one. Okay, else. If so, number is greater than zero, greater than one, then uh, I need to have a for loop int i equal to number. Then I have to say num i is greater than one i minus minus. So this is the logic, and then I have to say result equal to result into number.
So it present into I'm sorry. So this is my code for calculating the factorial. So I have a loop and loop will multiply the number. So if it is four, so then the loop will run from I equal to four. Uh, so four into three into two, three times it will run multiplication of into one is not necessary. So ignoring it, that's why I is greater than one. Now let's see how is our test cases. I run and after saving this particular file, I rerun the test cases and then let me see the results. So test factorial of one is passing, factorial of zero is passing, factorial of four and factorial of five, all the test cases are passed. So this is a great example, you know, I have created so many tests and I have a very nice uh, display message for each of the tests. There's one more feature, uh, this is called nested test. Uh, there's uh, one problem with this implementation. Let's see, what if, if I give an invalid input? I say factorial of some negative number. No, so will it be working fine? Uh, it should return me an exception saying that factorial of negative number is undefined. So let's implement this feature. And for this again, using test-driven development approach, I'll create the test case first, then we'll write the implementation to match the uh, test case and the test case will be passed. So we will get to know that, okay, the implementation is finished. So let me uh, create a nested class. I would say error uh, handling. Uh, test. So let me call this as uh, you know, the class to test error handle. Okay, I'm just using nested class here uh, just to group them and I'll say I'll put a display name saying error handling test. Okay, uh, so nested is not imported. Let me import nested. Okay, uh, then uh, let me create a test void test. Uh, I would call exception. Okay, uh, here the I will use a new method. Assertions, I guess everyone is familiar with. Now there is uh, no assert equals assert true, assert false, and then there is another method which is called assert false. So let me. It is assert true. Okay. Uh, so now uh, let me see if it can be assert throws. Okay, this is part of assertions dot assert throws. Okay. okay, yeah. So now uh, I have an exception here. So we'll say illegal argument exception. So this is what we are expecting, and uh, what should be here. There's a lambda expression. I say fixture dot calculate factorial, and in this case, say we will get minus 3. So we pass some negative number which is invalid and uh, so this is how, so when I pass minus 3 as an argument this should return uh, no value it should just throw an exception saying we get argument exception. So I have written the test case definitely no, this test case uh, I just created a nested. So okay, I need to put test here because otherwise it's just treated as a normal method and definitely no, it's a good practice to place some display message, I would say this is a uh, legal argument. Now let them be too technical, we say test factorial of okay, negative number. Okay, or say factorial of negative numbers do not exist. Okay, so now let me run it. Last time the test interfered, this time we see the test is failing. So now we have to make this pass. So we need to go to the implementation. So let's do the validity of argument check first. So I will have here, okay, uh, one condition. So if number is less than zero, then we say uh, throw the legal argument exception. Okay, so this is uh, our code to implement this. And otherwise, yeah, definitely the other flow will work. So let's read in these tests. Okay. Yes, so we see that now the assertion is true. The test is passing. We are throwing the message. We are throwing the exception. Now let's put the message. I say mm, factorial of negative numbers do not exist. So let me read and this still it is passing. Now let's test whether uh, we are getting the message as expected. So what we can do is uh, we can capture this into say one exception object. Let's create this e equal to 
and then at the end, okay, let me just make this monitable e dot message e dot get message. We can say uh, do an assertion of this. So assert, I would say equals. Okay, uh, a is a small here. Assets equals, and this is a string matching which we need to do. So we say string. So here, what we are expecting is a factorial of negative numbers do not exist, and this is about a test error message. Now let me read in this to ensure we are getting the same error message. Yes, so we are getting the same error message. Just to check this, let me say change this. I'll put some other text in case by mistake someone changes my message, then the test should fail. So yeah, this is what this is happening. So here I say expected factorial of number do not exist, but I'm getting factorial of number do not exist double angular brackets. So let me fix this and read on this. Yeah, as you see now, the test should pass. So here is our test. Test factorial calculation. We tested factorial of zero. We tested factorial of negative number do not exist. So this, with the help of test-driven development, I introduced you various features of GeoMate 5, which is ascertain equals display name nested tests. So these are most of the things which we need to use while testing any Java code. Thank you.